be a kid. I'm just. I love it, man. Well, well, first off, welcome to the show, Andy. And uh, look, man, I, I, I really, I reach out to you because, I mean, you, you have a, you have a story, nonetheless, right? And then you have this business. But what came before the business was a story, clearly. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm new to following you. But what I have seen and what I have witnessed from your stories, man, I mean, it's, it's nothing short of inspirational, bro. And what you've done with your product and the continuation of building the product and building the brand, it's hugely inspirational to a lot of people, man. I know your followers, as well as these listeners that are going to be tuning into the podcast, are going to greatly benefit from what you have to offer, man. So I want you, this pot, I should, I should kind of first give a, uh, a preface of this podcast in this podcast. I just want you to be raw, real transparent. Oh, man. oh let's right? go. So if, uh, and clearly if there's anything off the table, then just, you know, navigate around it. But the more real you can be the better, bro, because it's going to be far more yeah. relatable to people and they'll be able to gather more from it. So mm-hmm. I kind of just, for those of who people are uninformed about you or what you do, tell them a little bit about who Andy is. Oh man. Well, first off, thank you so much for reaching out and and having me on this podcast. It's perfect timing right now. I'm going through a little, uh, just um, a spiritual awakening right now, I would say, you know, I'm I'm becoming sober and uh, it was something that needed to happen. But um, so I just, I'm out here in the Colorado mountains, just uh, and really enjoying uh, the connections that I'm making, the change that I'm making and waking up every single day, just feeling on fucking fire you know what i mean and um i just uh well yeah like you said i mean uh, it, that you know in 2011 i was in a big accident where i was hit by a westbound heading vehicle lost consciousness run over or hitting the eastbound lane and then run over by another uh eastbound heading vehicle clothes cut off me in the middle of the street woke up in a cedar side icu bed with my chin uh compound fractures through the bottom of my mouth seven broken ribs collapsed lung Lucky to be talking to you right now, but I was unrecognizable, you know, jaw wired shut, no teeth. And, um, you know, walking out of that hospital, I think it was six days later, uh, with the titanium plate up top, one on the bottom, uh, but grateful to be alive, you know, and I just, I had my family there with me, my sisters, my brother, my mom and dad, all in my little 660 square foot apartment in North Hollywood, California. And, You know, it was weird because, I mean, I I could walk, you know, my elbows were fine. I didn't break anything, you know, ankle wise. So I could walk, dude. And so like, I, I, I I put together this plan of just, all right, getting circulation going, even though those first couple of days I was banged up, you know, I had to take my medicine. I was just waking up in the middle of the night. My sisters would come over sharing a little twin futon, which is like, it's gotta be about six feet long, maybe four feet wide, but you know, both my sisters just made it, found a way to make it happen. And, um, that was a pretty special moment because we're, we're, you know, it's very rare that all of us are together. You know, my sisters have their families and their, you know, their children and, and their, and their husband's families that they go visit during the holidays. But I mean, it was a beautiful moment in an interesting way that um, we were all together and there was, there was so much love. I was alive, man. And people don't survive accidents like that. And so I just, uh, you know, I didn't like what I saw in the mirror <laughs> to say the least, but you know, I was in the entertainment industry or whatever for a little bit. And, And uh, that was how I made my living. And I knew that was going to be put on hold for quite a while, but um, I was so, am so grateful to be alive. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride ever since, you know? Well, what did you do in the entertainment industry? I was an actor and a model. Uh, Any, any obviously big brands that we can, uh, we we, uh, recognize? Yeah, I, I, I walked the runway for Calvin Klein, Levi's. I shot a global campaign for Oakley, which really changed my life. That, that was I was able to get out of bartending and um, really focus in on Alatura after that because, you know, for financial reasons. And, stuff. And, and that was after the accident, you know, bouncing back through that, through the, the clay mask and my weird formulations that are now part of the line. But I mean, it just... Uh, yeah, it was one of those things right after the accident. It's like, well, you're never going to model again. Like, how are you going to make any money? Are you going to get some money out of the accident? We didn't sue, dude. Um, it was the wrong thing to do. And I, I just felt it was. But because pedestrian has a right of way, blah, blah, blah. You can sue the city of Los Angeles. But, man, uh, karma's real. And I uh, I felt that it was my fault. And um, so I just, uh, yeah, bouncing back just become because I couldn't afford the creams and serums that the surgeons were recommending that I use to counteract the scarring and abrasions that I had. And I had a pre-existing clay mask that I was already using, definitely hiding back when I had roommates, right? I'd sneak into the bathroom and just like, I had Rasul clay, 
I know I had bentonite. I think I had kelp powder at that time and maybe kaolin, but I know I had Russell and bentonite in, 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 in kelp powder and I'd like mix up, uh, you know, some sweet orange oil and like apple cider vinegar, run into the bathroom real quick that I was sharing with a roommate and then like go into my room, let it dry and then hop in the shower real quick. But I kept it under the sink. So I'm sure they knew. But uh, so I had that pre-existing mass that brought a lot of uh, blood flow and circulation to the surface of the skin as well as exfoliating and nourishing that area that you just freshly exfoliated, right? And so I knew I had that, right? And I just started, you know, dipping, you know, my jaws wired shut, my teeth were gone. Um, and so I, I would just get my nutrition in through a little, um, a straw in the back of my mouth. I had this little corner that got all uh, realigned during, after the accident. But uh, it just, uh, so that's how I got my nutrition. But I, I would visit with different Chinese herbalists, uh, George Lamaru, uh, Ron T. Garden at Dragon Herbs, Crosby Taylor, uh, Truth Calkins, Sage Dammers, those guys are lifesavers, man. I mean, because I would just pick their brain with my jaw wired shut, you know, and uh, which is, you know, I, I just, I, but I, I knew they had so much knowledge to, and Daniel Vitalis was huge too. I think he put me onto colostrum. I mean, just by listening to him, you know, and learning from him. And so I just, I, colostrum is expensive. Pearl powder is expensive. Vitamin C, ascorbic acid, it's a high potency form of vitamin C that crosses the epidermis of your skin. It really helps with brightening and regenerating the skin cells during the scar or uh, the cell turnover process. And that helped with the scar healing. But my abrasions were gone within like three or, three or four weeks. I remember picking up Christina Rodriguez from the Burbank airport and she like did a, like a legitimate double take. She's like, oh, what hope? Because she saw me right after the ICU and I, I was just, uh, unrecognizable man and so i just uh yeah it was awesome man i mean because that, that was like the first step i needed those little victories just to get back you know mentally subconsciously that i would that i was getting back to myself i mean because i was real i was i was down and out but i counteracted you know what i mean with like uh perspective was huge i mean a lot of people have gone through a lot of worse things than, than i did and uh, I just kept that in my mind. I'm like, dude, I could breathe. I could walk. I would go on these little uh, walks down Chandler bike path, 3.5 miles there, 3.5 back after the sun sets so the scar wouldn't get baked in from the sun. And um, man, that was just, uh, I'll never forget that because it was just, I remember that hump that you get over because you're like, all right, step by step, you know, because the, the circulation pulled to the surface of the skin from the, uh, from what's now the clay mask was really mitigating the swelling. And man, that was hard. I would go to whole new grocery stores. And uh, cause man, people would look at you in the eyes and be like, what the, <laughs> uh, and that, that just made me feel uncomfortable. And then also like imagine smiling and then want to mitigate your smile because you don't want anybody to see the fact that you don't have any, you know, your front teeth are growing. It was tough, man, but Hey, you know, it just builds resilience and, you know, going through something like that just calluses your exterior for the rest of your life. I think, I think the more you go through stuff like that, shit, the stronger you become, you know? Cool. Yeah. And prior to that, what had you gone through that was going to equip you to handle something like that? I mean, like where your whole identity is basically shattered because you're only making coin on your ability to look good. And <laughs> now that's fucking gone. <laughs> not Well, gone temporarily, yeah. but still, nonetheless, it's gone, man. So like uh, somebody that orients himself in that specific space, that's everything is, is essentially under the umbrella of how you look. And then that happens that must have been really really hard on your psyche bro to come out of that it was and it pissed me off too people are like well you're never gonna model what are you gonna do man what are you gonna do i'm like Fuck. I, man tell me i'm not gonna do something and watch me fucking do it you know what i mean i just i period i just don't like people telling assuming that i you know anybody just don't tell anybody don't limit their ability to to bounce back from something so i, I just really use that as a motivating factor I really did. And, and so um, I just, uh, you know, step by step, I, I, I mean, I was back on the runway. I mean, because I, I booked a job in San Francisco that I didn't tell my San Francisco agent about. It was, a, it was a runway show for Macy's up in San Jose in Santana Row. And I made that an outside goal. It was like the first week of June and the accident was March 20th through the map. I mean, like eight or nine weeks later, I was back. You know, I, I did that. And that was a big victory for me, you know, just just being back doing something that told, uh, people told me I wouldn't do. And then shortly after that, I booked a print job down in San Diego and I was back doing what I loved. And then get this a year later to the day, March 20th, 2012, a, to the exact day I was in Smashbox Studios uh, shooting a five page spread for uh, Fifty Shades of Grey is like Christian Grey. Uh, yeah, is like the model. So like 
it, it was really, really like the serendipitous aspect of it was, was surreal, but I just love that I was back and just, I accomplished a goal. It wasn't always about modeling or whatever, but, and I know it's kind of a funny career, but it was my career in, um, and it was how I made my money. And, and, and it was just, it was, it was a bit, it was just a, a, a test, you know, setting those goals and then bouncing back and then knocking those down, man. It just, again, it just builds internal fortitude, you know, man, what got you into the whole mass business in the first place? All right. So I think there was a little eight ounce container. Well, I know there was, but I don't know if I got it. My mom got it or my sister got it. It was that Aztec healing clay. I'm talking back when I was about 20 years old. Uh, I, I just, I, I put it on one day. I think I was, I think I had a date that night or something. And it, I just was, it tightened up my, my uh, skin so much, but it gave me like this glow. And I, I just, I've been using it ever since I want to say about 20 years old. And then it, up until I moved to LA, which is what 25. So about for about five years, I just, I became curious about sourcing a different, um, a different uh, source than Aztec healing clay. And I, I, the same place that I got that bentonite clay from, I got the raw soul from. And I just became, you know, really interested in the benefits of it, how mineral dense it was, how rich it was in, um, in minerals. And then also I, I talked to uh, Jason Eton from greenclays.net, I believe, or .com. I'm not sure which one uh, they are right now today, but, uh, he was like a little guru. He was like a mentor for me and he knew so much. He's written books on clays and how powerful they are as a detox protocol, um, for skin benefits, internal cleansing as well. And I just, uh, I, I just thought it was so interesting. So I would buy clays directly from him, French eyelight, kaolin, uh, pyrophyllite, zeolite. I just, in a lot of the things, zeolite, obviously internally, um, cleansing, but, uh, very good for the skin as well. And I just became, I just became, I, you know, my mom reminds me of this back in the day, I would make these little potions and not creams, but like ever since I was like, I don't know, eight, nine years old, I just have been really interesting in the chem in the chemistry of like combining different substances and seeing how they work together, just like pretty much for the, the look aspect of it. And like seeing how oil and water would, wouldn't mix, but then shaking it up with different ingredients. I've always been, uh, it's it's been a passion that's been staring me in my face my entire life, but I'd never um, thought I'd be in this industry, you know. And but here I am, you know. Well, you're clearly obsessed with it. Oh no, it's it's it's, it's unbelievable. It's it's, a good thing, I can't, it's the sauna. That's where I get my clearest thinking done. I mean, I I went to Egypt recently, and I go because we're making this product, the Mystic Mist, but it, we're not going to call it the Mystic Mist. I think it's going to be like the Egyptian Mist. It's a toner, but it's fucking next level. Like we're putting copper peptide in there, a little caffeine, niacinamide, uh, organic alcohol, and then witch hazel combination is like a dry as a delivery method, and then Saqqara flower, blue nine, blue Nile lily, and a blend of different um, blood orange oil. It is insane. It's like the next. It, it's a toner that. Uh, Anyway, I was just I was in the sauna the other night and I just went, oh yeah, yeah, let's go get a native plant to Egypt and throw in there, make it like it. I just I just geek out on this stuff, man. It's non-stop too. Like it's just there's always a way to make something better. And if you really, it's just a big interest of mine. And and just finding out the ingredients that are located all around the world that are that are medicine for not only the skin, but internal health as well. Uh they're out there and you meet with different shamans and sages and people that they see, they see you're interested. They'll share some pretty cool stuff with you. And then you start doing research and then you start sourcing it and seeing how it combines with different elements, essential oils, butters, extracts. And then next thing you know, it actually becomes just a mind blowingly effective potion product, whatever you want to call it. But it's, it, it I definitely am obsessed, man. I, I like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to hide that ever, dude. It you just, can tell, man. And, and for people that aren't viewing this live and they're listening to it, you're, you're, you're naming off these different elements as if like, I know the validity of all of them. And you're like, I got this one coming. <laughs> this one coming. And I'm like, I have, you could be just naming out shit off the cuff. I have no idea, you know, but I mean, it's, it's evident that you know what you're talking about and you have a deep, rooted passion in this bro and anybody <laughs> can respect that like anybody can respect that it doesn't matter what the passion is or what it's infused in if you have a passion and there and it gives you meaning 
people have no choice but to respect that in you because <laughs> fucking rare that people even have that ability to be so passionate about something and geek out so (laughs) so profoundly on something that you just can't help but respect that and respect that that actually pursued in that person so that is definitely admirable bro i appreciate that you know it's so true though i mean i was at t-mobile the other day and we, I just get to talking about me. I think a good song came on. I was like, that's a fucking banger. And the guy's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, and somehow we got uh, talking about into drumming. Okay, you know Tools dr- Tools Drummer? Um, Danny, D- something Duffy. Anyway, he's, next thing you know, he and I are just, both of us, goosebumps, like, palp, like you, it's just through the roof, just looking at it, watching this like 10-minute solo on YouTube of this guy, just out-of-body experience, just, you know, just going to town. And he, so not only do we see like this guy's just, he's his life's purpose is drummer for tool. Yeah. It's gotta be tool. Yeah. It is tools drummer. And, um, and then, but then he and I are bonding. And we're just geeking out on the fact that we love music. I'm definitely passionate about music as well. And, um, but it's, yeah, you're absolutely right. When someone talks about making a meal, whatever their music, their art, what uh, the art that they made or, or a painting, and they, they can explain it and go into the intricacies of how they did it. And, and with detail, in detail, like you feed off that. And then it just, it, I mean, I just have a, an interesting react, like physical reaction to that. And it, it, it just gives me chills every time, you know, and it just, it, it's inspiring, you know, it is, man. It, it's contagious. When people are around other people like yourself that have that that sense of purpose and meaning in their life and they stop at nothing to attain it, it's very, very much infectious to others around them. That's why they always say, man, you're like your friends, your five closest friends, you're like them. And if they're pieces of shit, likely you're going to be a piece of shit. Or if they're elite and high earning individuals, then likely you're going to follow that same path. So right. it's definitely who you orient yourself around, man. But that's all good shit. True. All high, high, um, I guess, what's the word? Anyways, it's very, it's very, it's very heightening, entertaining to hear all that shit from you, dude. But yeah. Yeah, there's a you. downside. There's a downside to everything. Mm-hmm. And the downside in your situation has probably been um, something that you've been uh, trying to cope your best with. Mm-hmm. So I want you to talk about that for the people too. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's, well, I, I've, I've been, you know, we, we've all been let down, taken advantage of, I don't want to act like I'm the only one. Uh, it, it just really hurts. though when, um, especially it involves something that you care so much about, um, uh, when you, when you're let down and lied to and uh deception uh is involved it just it really i take that really really personally and i'm working on that and so also with that is the fighting through with i call it dos manos two hands and like just you know and just taking care of it if nobody else is going to do it i'm going to do it you know what i mean i'm talking uh, social media customer service every part of the business formulating products connections with the manufacturers distributors packaging uh, all of it's me you know and and eight plus years, people would tell me, oh, you know, you're not gonna, you know, you're gonna get burned out. You're not, you can't do it yourself. You can't, I man, can't, I can't, I just can't stand that. So uh, it's true though. I, I deserve me time. We all do. We have to take me time, but I, I just don't have an off switch with Alatura. When I wake up, it, you know, the internet doesn't sleep. Number one, number two, it's like a, I always thought it was, you know, I got, I have to set boundaries. You know, I have to set boundaries as far as like, look, you know, you're, you're off the clock six. It's going to be tough, dude. I'm going to have to taper down. We'll see how that goes. But it just really led to um, the combination of that and the frustration with uh, lack of effort man, entitlement, work ethic. Yeah. And then also having been held over, you know, held by that, uh, by some of your faults, you know, I'm not a flawed individual um, from that aspect. I'm passionate and I'll be just as passionate when I see somebody fucking up and do something wrong doing something wrong and and not working hard and missing something it's like how, how do you miss that do your just do your job do what i'm paying you to do please man this is helping hundreds of thousands of people worldwide this is my purpose period like it and it, it's like I, I just and then i get riled up and then I, you know you calm down you cope with it and i was coping with substance so uh you know to, to kind of like uh counteract that and that's a bad um 
it's a bad recipe, dude, because of the chemical imbalance, you become irritable to people that you love, my family members, my friends, and then you develop bad habits with, you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, with my slogan being radiate health, I just, I, 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 there was a lot of shame in that, you know, in, in the partying and stuff like that, and, and just excess of things to, because number one, I liked it. Um, it was a nice quote unquote stress reliever, but it's not really a stress reliever when you're waking up having to hit the sauna and then work it out and then like overcome that chemical imbalance from the toxins that you just put in the system. So um, that's it. Oh, I can't even tell you how good I feel every single day, not having to rely on any of that. You know, it's interesting. I used to intermittent fast, right? And so I'd wake up, pop an Adderall or whatever, coffee, um, supplements, my morning tonic. So my stomach's going, what the fuck is this, dude? Like, it's just, I'm in brain fog. And then I'm irritable. And I'm, you know, it's just like, it's just not a bad combination. Here, sunlight, talk with mom, breakfast, crush a workout, sauna. I'm a fucking lightning bolt all day long, you know? Like, I, I mean, it's what, uh, what, four, 353 here. Oh, man, I, I got, I have a lot of energy naturally through that, through that, uh, just, um, through, you know, easily, uh, an easily sustainable method of that I can, that, that I feel great. I, you know, I sleep, I'm sleeping better. Um, and I'm, I'm not fucking around anymore. And I, I want just one foot in front of the other. It, it's just, it really came after Egypt, man. I had a very, very spiritual experience at one of the temples there, uh, Saqqara and, and the people I met, the life, <laughs> life and death situations that I was in the terrifying, I'm talking bone chilling, uh, situations that I was in just I really uh, yeah it, it was such a uh, gauntlet of emotions and peaks and valleys is, is the only way to describe it but you come back from that it was it was really it was, it was a lot of trauma involved with that uh, but like I, I just um, uh, it's something that it was just a, a total awakening I swear from my my uh, affirmations that were followed by actions through just really getting down on my knees and, and, you know, at the temples and just really hoping for balance and getting rid of substance, getting that out of my life, getting rid of the unnecessary shame that I felt, you know? Well, did you have like an outer body experience is to the reason yeah. why it was so true. Okay. So tell me about that. Man, I was, I was walking around the streets of London and I, I love listening to music. I was just, man, every morning I'd go on walks, like, you know, you know, just check, it's a beautiful city. The architecture there is just insane. And, uh, this one song came on. Uh, let me look it up. It, 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 dude, I, there was no reason why this only song would come. No other song on iTunes would play. It was, um, yeah, Am I Wrong by Nico and Vins. And it was just like, it, he's basically just saying, am I wrong for just wanting to, wanting more and, and wanting to step outside of the box and not do what everybody else does and just be your fucking self, you know? It, it uh it was the only song that, that would play on, I'm telling you, I have hundreds of songs on there. And it, it just, I'd never, I just downloaded that song because a friend that I met the night before uh, had it on his story or something. It was, I loved it. And um, I just, uh, it was, I was just in tears, man. And uh, that, that was a, a surreal moment from above that just really just led to, I'm going to follow my own path. I'm going to stay and be exactly who I am. And, um, I think in my most authentic self. And then, and then also, I think that that, you know, led to me following my just mission to go to Egypt and then um, learn a lot about myself, learn how strong I was in certain <laughs> terrifying situations. And then um, uh, you, you bounce back from that <laughs> landing in Las Vegas was just, I, I could not believe it. Uh, just coming home and being able to make it home through that was uh it was, yeah, it was, it was beautiful, but it was what I, it was pretty traumatic, but anyway, so like you just, uh, you know, you, you, you build that internal strength and, and, and you kind of, you know, through the things that you, you go through and you overcome, I wouldn't, you know, put myself in certain situations that, you know, just, you know, intentionally, but I, and I definitely didn't, but it's just the collective opinion on Americans overseas is not very positive right now. And, um, and so I, <laughs> and I had to deal with that. And so, uh, but it's just, you know, coming back and, and just really appreciating things more. And then really at, at right now, 
um, appreciating every second of life and what I have and the people I have around me and how much we can you know, potentially encourage someone to be themselves and, 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 and work towards their goals and, 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 and pour gas on their, those embers of their passions and their interests, man, you can do anything you fucking want, man. You know, it, it just takes effort and, and all, effort and interest and, a, you know, a serious passion and obviously work, but you stay on top of that. It fucking feels good, man. You know? And yeah, man. And a lot of it is uh, our perception to the, the things that happen to us and what, what, I guess, fights we are, fires we have to extinguish along the way. But it's like looking at it from a perspective lens of, look, I have to do this to get here. And this is just part of the process. And this is not happening. I know this sounds massively fucking cliche, but I'm going to say it anyways. It's happening for me, not to me. And that's perspective, man. And I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast on a walk today. And he had a guy named uh, Sam Tripoli, which is he's a comedian. And he had him on his podcast and this guy's like really about conspiracy theory and all that. Right. And, and, and that's kind of entertaining to hear about, you know, conspiracy theories and all the different, different ones that exist. But he said something, he said, you know, I'm not, I'm not in, I said, he said something to the effect of I, I, I'm about perspective, not reality. Like there's no reality. It's only perception or that's what he said. Something like that. I'm butchering it. Look, it's perception. Not, not reality. And, and then Joe obviously questioned him on that. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, and then he went off on a tangent as to what, as to, to define what perception really means. And I guess it is, but then again, that's a law of physics that I haven't even traveled down. And, and I, 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 it's beyond me. A lot of that shit is beyond me. And, and I'm obviously functioning in what I think is reality. But then again, a perspective on whatever, whatever, I guess, fires that come our way are, are, we can look at it from the lens of good, or we can look at it from the lens of bad, or we can look at it from the lens of this is for me to progress me. And so, you know, obviously your situation is, is, is pretty, is pretty dark in juxtaposition to other people's situation that they've gone through or their life, their experiences, et cetera. But nonetheless, man, I mean, it's, it's supercharged you to be in the position that you are in, which is then going to have a ripple effect in terms of the inspiration that it, that it generates to everybody around you. And, you know, that's why when, so sub, so getting on the topic of substance abuse, that is the, um, that is the pawn in all this because that sort of situation, when people dabble in that, it slowly deteriorates and drains what they otherwise could project and could emit to others that could benefit them. It's like it, Matt, it's like, it just takes them out, puts them on pause. Yeah. And that's, and that's fucked because then you cannot be the person that you were created to be to everybody around you and contribute in the ways that you're best at contributing with, you know what I mean? And that's right. something that that's, that is the, uh, that's the loss there. It's mm-hmm. like, if we lost someone like Andy, we, if we lost you, that would fucking suck. It wouldn't be something that just kind of like, well, yeah, Andy, you know, he passed. No, it would be Andy passed and fuck because he was doing this and this was helping this person, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line. It's not just like, oh man, that's a bummer. It's more than that, bro. To people that don't have an existence and have no meaning and are putting through life or living in their mom's basement and not doing shit with it. Yeah. Maybe that person, oh fuck, he's gone, fuck. And that's it. But people that are actually doing active, progressive work in other people's lives and being an active inspiration in other people's lives, those people can't die yet. They can't die. Right. No, I I mean, I I really appreciate you saying that, man. It's, uh, no, I definitely feel that way. And um, I definitely uh, have that perspective and feeling. It's, It's so nice to feel the love. Um, that I do and that I, that I've, I've seen just over the past couple months, just, I went through a little bit of a yeah tough time there. Just, yeah, 
Yeah, but I mean, just I got encouraged back through people like yourself, and um, it really helped me. Um, just it was just one step in front of the other, and just these these signs just kept happening and popping up all around me. And it's just I'm right where I'm supposed to be right now, and um, it really, uh, it's it's such a surreal feeling and experience every single day. Uh, since I decided to to get to give that up and remove that from my life, man, I really appreciate you saying that, man. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you saying that, Justin. So thank you. I uh, it's extremely important to me, and also it's just it's 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 um, why, why would I ever want anything else different than the way I feel every single day? Uh, and it just keeps getting better, man. It's just like you you just follow the the universe's path that they've paid for you. You give gratitude. I'm starting to pray more. I'm becoming more and more spiritual. Um, and just, I, I'm so grateful to be alive, man. And uh, I just, uh, it's just my mission from here on out to encourage others tastefully and authentically that uh, they can do the same. And you, man, you nailed it with the ripple effect. You never know what's going to happen. I have a feeling this thing's going to be big though. And um and especially with what the world just went through and is in what's happening right now, they want truth. People, we all want truth. We want authenticity. We want real fucking people that are going to be there for them. And, and I just, I can naturally encourage hopefully through, you know, through what, what I've been through in my story, but at the same time, like it also being involved in, in skincare, it's just so beautiful to see people smile. And now I can live authentically through my, my slogan and radiate health truthfully and, and just, uh, you know, just, 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 I, I owe so much to the cells of every cell in my body and I can't wait to spoil the shit out of them. You know what I mean? And, uh, it just feels good, man. I mean, popping the fuck right out of bed, dude, every morning, five 36. I mean, I'm sleeping. It's a, it's a trip, man. I can't believe it took this long, but I'm glad I'm here. You know, and I gotta, I gotta talk about the fact that you're shredded as well. <laughs> <laughs> for people that haven't seen you yet man you got to go look this guy up man and we're gonna <laughs> obviously give your, we're gonna obviously exploit your handles at the end of the podcast for people to go look you up if they don't know who you are but you're you're shredded man and I, look i want you to talk about what how do you eat man because i'm sure you get that question a lot um i, I can i can gather how you eat because I, I i live the same kind of life but the fact is you have a probably a different take on 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 eating or maybe you, you employ intermittent fasting still but tell people about kind of like a rant, a regular day for you in terms of eating and exercising and what you do your program hey so it used to be and this wasn't good it was supplements big coffee in the morning boom adrenals through the roof and then, you know, crashing, obviously, with the Adderall or whatever, like that just that didn't help. And then it mitigated my my appetite. I was eating like shit. But normally, I mean, back in the day, it used to be more uh, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, good fatty meats, ribeyes, lamb, um, uh, sockeye salmon, and then eggs and then just sweet potatoes. I mean, I, it beets, uh, fermented vegetables. In, you know, I have a, some uh, probiotics that I like right now from uh, bio optimizers. I'm just, I'm trying that out. And then I get, I really get hard on like the, you know, the methylene blue, the uh, NAD um, copper peptide I'm big on, but yeah, as far as diet and how that goes, um, I'm huge on the sauna, by the way, I know it's not diet, but like niacin work your way up, I'm, you know, brings a lot of impurities to the surface of your skin, you hop in the sauna, you're gonna be beet red, I recommend doing it at night, unless you want to be a little rosy throughout the day. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, that's the recipe. I mean, I, I used to intermittent fast, I would say 18 to sometimes 25 hours a day. And I but I would, I just didn't feel I was nourishing my body, you know, I'm 6'3", about 205. And I feel good right now eating breakfast. So maybe what I, what I'm going to start to do is like breakfast in, um, in dinner or breakfast. Yeah. Cause I gotta have dinner, man. But dude, I gotta tell you <laughs> I <have> dinner, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, but I would say they say that eight hour window is good. I, I just, I'm experimenting with something that I feel so fucking good right now. I don't know why I would, I would switch it up. So I do understand intermittent fasting with people that want to do that. Maybe you go, 
but the breakfast has been huge for me. I, I just, it, breakfast has been huge for me. I don't want to go the old coffee route, how it was back in the day. Maybe I'll try that out now that I'm not, you know, you know, taking Adderall or whatever, but like, um, but yeah, just a good breakfast, eggs, avocado. I'm big on protein fats. I don't, I don't do any carbs, although sweet potatoes at night, I'll do a little bit before bed, Ben Greenfield, uh, you know, if you're going to have carbs before you go to bed, apparently that's, um, that's a little bit, uh, that's the best time to do it. I I'll, I'll, I'll have some sweet potatoes, good grass fed, um, fatty meats. I love fats. Good fats just help generate, build testosterone, building blocks and testosterone, good saturated fats. Um, I stay away from sugar, starches, dairy for the most part, unless it's like Gouda or truffle Gouda. Mm. I love, love cheese every now and then in, in omelets, but, um, yeah, mostly cruciferous vegetables, uh, good fatty meats, uh, organ meats are huge liver. I mean, I'm going to start, uh, maybe dabbling with kidney cause I have some kidney, not kidney issues, but I want to just repair my body, man. You know what I mean? Like I, I put it through quite a bit over the past 22 years. And, um, but yeah, just, you know, staying, uh, switching it up, not staying consistent with only ribeyes, you know, switching up the proteins, eggs, sockeye, salmon, wild, good, uh, um, uh, Let's see what what are some other good ones that I like. Um, I, yeah, sardines are are solid. Oysters. I had some scallops the other night, and my body had a definite physical reaction. Some something there. Uh, scallops are are good, are good for uh, just testosterone, libido. I mean, yeah, it's so I, every now and then I would switch that up, even though the mercury levels may be a little um, high in that. Um, and then uh, yeah, ribeyes, lamb. And then also the crock pot is huge. So if you're someone who's busy, you just, man, you throw in a good uh, lamb shoulder, leg of lamb, throw in some sweet potatoes, just, you know, a little bit of water, olive oil, sea salt, pepper, garlic, onions, uh, whatever vegetable you want to throw in there. And man, you just, you just turn it on, let it cook throughout the day. You're going to start smelling it. Good luck. Not dip, oh, yeah. Dip, oh, yeah. That. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I love cooking too. And I'm going to have more time to do it now and definitely more energy no more excuses late at night irritable oh, just postmates fuck that dude it's time to get back to where i was so so you have a big breakfast and then you kind of fast throughout the day until dinner time yeah that's what yeah yeah and then you and you're training like in midday something like that right morning morning, oh, morning. yeah so i'll go coffee yeah uh double shot espresso butter a little bit of water, music, fire up a workout, sauna. I'm on fire. Then I eat, get a little sunlight, talk to mom. I mean, that's the recipe for my morning, man, right nice. there. And then, and then about six, seven hours later, you're having dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So seven, so five, seven. So it's about a 12. So say if I eat around seven, so it's about a 12 hour. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not really getting into that 15 hour sweet spot, but dude, I feel what, great, dude. Yeah. And do whatever you can adhere to and you can be consistent with, because really the thing that matters overall is energy balance. So calories in versus calories expended. I mean, that's really all it boils down to, man. And if you can adhere to that in a, in a big bolus amount of food twice a day, instead of like four meals or five meals split up or yeah. one big ass meal, you know, yeah. in, in one part of the day, then that's, and that's, what's going to work for you, bro. And, and really the changes of your body are going to be pretty much, you know, analogous all the way through, unless, you know, you're eating more calories or less calories than you're taking or than you're expending, you know? Yeah. Like it's, I've done the same thing. I played intermittent fasting. I was intermittent fasting for like five years and I played around with intermittent fasting with paleo, intermittent fasting with keto intermittent fast you know all the shit all of it dude and i come because i used to competitive bodybuild back in the day and i'm used to five six small meals a day man yeah. and i my body was you i guess like i built a tolerance or an understanding of that i guess not an understanding i built a tolerance i guess to the six meal situation and then i went to intermittent fasting and then i went I started to, I started to fucking lose muscle, like after the first like year or two, but I didn't, it didn't compute because I just got in a comfort with this new diet dynamic yeah. and, and, and it was helping me in my lifestyle. 
that's what was most important. It was, I didn't have to think about food all the time. I just, I ate that big bolus amount of food when I got home from training and then maybe another little something right before I went to bed. And that was it, man. You know, like a four hour window, a five hour window. And, uh, I just, I started developing like, I think gut issues, bro, from it. Yeah. And, and, um, and so then I went back to doing just regular four, five meals a day, four or five meals a day, maybe one of those being a protein shake and it kind of reversed itself. Uh, and I didn't feel that discomfort anymore. I always felt bloated after my meals and shit. A lot of, a lot of this, a lot of GI distress from the, from the foliage and from the high amounts, levels of protein and, and, and just carbs in general. So it's like, anyway so i went back to the regular old style split and that worked better for me um but if i'm like on vacation i'll intermittent fast and i'll save my calories for the end of the day when i go out to dinner um and have a big splurge dinner you know then i'll feel so bad about eating some things that are off the diet because i've saved i've allocated my calories to the end of the day pretty much i'll like take protein shakes when the morning protein shake midday and then I slam like a, a big meal. It's kind of like the fucking slim fast diet. <laughs> <laughs> Here you, go. you know, a protein shake in the morning, protein shake for lunch, and then a sensible dinner. But my shit's not sensible. It was like <laughs> so fucking massive. Let's go. Yep, I know. I, I can relate. No, because your body turns into that. No, I like that. It's like you, you got to listen to your body and then feel your energy, you know, your level of energy. And then just find, you know, fine tune what works and what doesn't. Staying hydrated is huge, but you're right. Big guys like, I mean, I just, sure, I understand cell starvation, cell autophagy, uh, I mean, and the science behind it. And it's it's worked to a certain extent. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to dabble around and I, I've just I've, I've fine tuned the approach throughout these past, well, ever since I've been into it, which is probably, yeah, over the last 17 years, I say, I, I would, I've really become passionate about diet and really really become aware of the ingredients i would say that's the most important thing is is the ingredients i mean you see the food here the, i mean just oh man it's just it's because you know i mean teach their own i'm big on that hey you do you and i'm gonna do me and i'll stay in my lane but it's just like they, there's fuel that you know is just going to put your body into that low vibrational state that yes. is not optimal and yeah. you can make those foods taste so good though uh, you know the you know arugula beets ribeye you know some like rosemary sweet potatoes grass-fed butter little sea salt and garlic oh, Come yeah. on, man. avocado too i mean let's yeah yeah hey so That's you know, good, I mean, just switching it up and finding out what works for you listening to your body yeah and then also listen to your gut i pay attention to like my diaphragm you know my belly button and diaphragm and see just making sure my gut isn't barking at me you know what i mean yeah yeah and so that that's a big thing and then supplementing with some good digestive enzymes and and good quality probiotics um microbiome labs is legit and um I, I'm, I'm working out with uh, uh uh bio optimizers right now and then and then every yeah it's that's that's what's worked for me right now but yeah just throughout the day though i feel better when like my blood sugar levels are are higher maybe like a nice coconut uh collagen protein shake with cherries and to get a little nutrient density and oxygen capacity from that as well and that just satiates me and gives and it just i feel better you know staying mineralized with good mineral water Gerol steiner pellegrino um you know some good and then salt too really good quality salt um I was just gonna uh, say salt. Let- yeah, I was just gonna say electrolytes are major, man. And everybody yeah. sleeps, everybody sleeps on electrolytes. Yeah. And it, you know, I I've tried, I don't know if you've tried nootropics or you're yes. in nootropic. You probably probably are. I've tried a lot of different nootropics, man. And I when I came across this liquid IV, you know, you ever heard of liquid IV? Yep. Okay, so Costco has it in bulk. I just buy it. I bought it one time in bulk, and I'm like, I just want to try this because I would I would drink, I would just put salt like just iodized salt in my water in the morning, maybe a little bit of lemon. And then I would, that would be like sort of a, a, a pick me up in terms of electrolytes. Right. Yeah. Well, I tried this, this liquid IV instead one day and the clarity I got, nothing else changed, man. My diet didn't change. My workout regimen did not change. The clarity I got from the electrolytes the added the, the potassium, magnesium, and sodium, and then the added zinc they put in there, a lot of added vitamin B12 or vitamin B or no, vitamin B12. And uh, I believe that's in there too. Uh-huh. Anyways, the clarity was 
very much tantamount to a nootropic. And wow. I, I swear that's the only thing that I took. And it was the same, if not better clarity in terms of like my, my fluidity with my words, except like yeah. thinking of things, being able to pull from different words in my portfolio or my vocabulary and dispense with, it was all there. And, and I kept, and, and I kept drinking it, kept, kept drinking. And that now it became my, my pre-workout that on top of, um, some liquid amino shit. Like yeah. I'm big on all the different pre-workout stems, yeah. all that shit. Yeah. And I just, I tossed them when I found liquid IV and amino, a liquid amino from, um, optimum nutrition. And I got it. I get it at Costco, bro. And it's just, I, I drink that before a podcast. I'll drink that in the morning. I just, it is, I swear people fucking sleep on electrolytes as if they don't have nootropic benefits. They're right. the, they're the, they're the, they're, they're the definite charge we need neurologically to be able to pull and just, and, and be able to be clear in, in terms of your, your writing ability, your thinking ability, your speaking ability, etc. It's all it's needed. If you just have the, the nootropics and you have proteins, fats, and carbs, and you hydrate, and you, even if you work out and do all that shit, I swear you're missing a vital component, man. The electrolytes are fucking vital. Like, and and I, I never put up. What's that? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. It's, it, it's a level of clarity. Your body just wakes up a little bit more. You know what I mean? When you're mineralized through electrolytes yeah. and that combination, like you said, B12, magnesium, zinc, um, and sodium. I mean, no, yeah, that's, I, I like it. Real salt has a good one. I'm going to check out liquid IV and, and you said optimal nutrition, liquid aminos, right? Yes. Amino, it's, it's amino. It's got some, uh, it's obviously branch chains and I think essential amino acids and it has, um, it has arginine. So they have it, yeah. amino, like amino nitric oxide, nice. but it's just a very, it's a very lesser version, uh, st stimulated pre-workout than like all the other ones you're used to seeing that have like three, 400 megs of caffeine and yeah. You know, <laughs> And then all the pump products to boot. I mean, that's a, that's a positive. I like the pump products and all the pre-workouts, but I'm telling you, man, this, this, the, this sodium has been the pump product for me. And I never knew how important that particular element was in its, in its entirety until I started supplementing with just electrolytes and having electrolytes in my my arsenal of nootropics and or pre-workout. Like I don't have nootropic. It is the electrolytes, but yeah. I swear I feel just as good. I've taken alpha brain before. Uh, I've taken, um, I don't know, a myriad of different uh, nootropics. And I, and I just, I can't tell you that anyone is superior over just the regular electrolytes, man. Yeah. But that's me that, I mean, I guess that's just, everybody's a little bit different. Right. But we're not, we're kind of the same, but we're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try that out. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that out. I, yeah. I've been big on electrolytes, obviously living in Nevada with the, you know, the heat, we got to replenish, stay hydrated. And then electrolytes have been huge, but um, I'm going to try that out in the morning. Cause that, yeah, the salt isn't enough. I need to switch that up for sure. Dude, it's the game. Yeah. man. I love yeah. it. Okay. Um, what's your workout program like? It's, um, I, um, I mean, it, today or well now it's 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 every day i'll mix it up i'll go chest and tries back by uh shoulders forearms i don't i sprint i need to mix in some legs fully uh, in, i gotta mix in some <laughs> legs justin i gotta start mixing in some legs my buddies are giving me shit dude oh, shit. Uh, but yeah i gotta start mixing in some squats and uh you know some front squats step ups lunges all that because man i mean the sprints i'm, I'm getting I don't know, but I like sprints. So I, I'll, I'll, I can do both, but it, you can so do both. Fun. Yeah. You just got it. You just got to periodize it. Strategically. <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not feeling the, the, the DOMS as you sprint, you know, from yeah. doing squats and doing leg training. Leg yeah. training has always been my, I, I, one of my favorites because it's, it's the most challenging. And yeah. I had a, a natural proclivity to have bigger legs. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I mean, I, I train with people and, and, and I train with people that have just started just like me and we kind of worked each other up and my legs always outgrew or out, I guess, numbered the other people that I were training with. And, yeah. and these are all, by the way, these are all people that are natural, meaning no steroids and nothing like that. Yeah. And, and myself as well. Yeah. So 
Uh, but I just, it's just a genetic thing, bro. It's just genetic. I can't toss it up. I mean, it is definitely work ethic that's tailored in there as well, but it's genetics. I'm predisposed to having a little bit bigger hamstring, quads, calves, et cetera, and yeah. being a little more powerful in my lower half. My upper yeah. half is not powerful, bro. Like my bench press sucks shit. I, I don't, I don't shoulder press that much. Like I just, even if I try to, it's, I don't have a natural innate ability to be strong in the presses, but when it comes to deadlift and squat, I mean, that's a different story, but, and I think because of that, because I knew I was better at those things, I naturally liked them more, you know, like we're always going to like what we're fucking good at. So, <laughs> <laughs> the things that bring us down and we're weak at, well, we don't want to, we don't want to focus on those. We don't want to work on those. And um, <laughs> yeah. because then it kind of takes the wind out of our sail, you know, oh, yeah. we, we yeah. want to stay confident, you know, but yeah. it's a leg things is a, ch- it's a challenging body group to work, man. But you see what you're made of when you are, especially when you're getting ready for competition or in your case, probably a photo shoot and you're trying to get super shredded, super dialed in and you're depleted and you start to train legs hard. You know, that'll show you what you're really fucking made of. (laughs) I love it. I love it. No, that's a good point. It's a good point. I'll start mixing it up. Dude, we were talking low weight, though, there, Justin. That's all right. That's all right, man. That's all right, dude. I want you, I want you to, I want you to do front spots and I want you to send me a video. Oh, okay. Tomorrow morning, bro. Okay. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe a 45 on each side. Oh. Hey, that's good, bro. That's good, man. Some people cannot even back squat a 45 with good form, dude. Like good form. Like they can't even, it, it's tough for a lot of people, bro. So, but the fact that you're starting anywhere, and especially a front squat, 45s on each side, that's a, that's a good amount of weight, bro. Especially- yeah, we'll see. We'll see, dude. We'll see. We'll see tomorrow, but it's important. I mean, that's where a lot of your power comes from. Testosterone is built. It's just rare, very important, you know, to get that, that base in uh, the lower half, you know, just, and it helps. Uh, I, th- I think it releases growth hormone throughout. It's, I know it's so important. I just got to, got to get into it. You know, <laughs> I got to do it. I can't wait to see that video, Andy. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, hey, people- man. I want, I know you got a busy life, man. You got a lot of shit to take care of. So I want you to tell people where they can find you if they, if they haven't already found you yet, man, what, what platforms are you okay. on and, and what your handles are? Oh, well, I'm, I'm Andy Nilo. My last name is spelled different. It's a H N I L O Andy H N I L O on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. And my company is Alatura, A L I T U R A N A T U R A L S Alatura Naturals on uh, Instagram, Facebook as well. And uh, I love what I do. Hey, this has been fucking awesome. This is one of my favorite podcasts I've ever done. Oh, that means a lot to me, bro. It was a pleasure talking to you, man. It really was. Like, I, I yes. love the exchange, and it was just a blessing to have you on, man. Hey, where are you based out of? So I'm in California um, in uh, about three and a half hours north of L.A. In a play at, yeah. on, the, on the coast, central coast. So it's um, fi- I, it typically coined as the five cities. So Royal Granny, Grover Beach. Um, I think Oceano and fuck a couple others, but it's, wow. the, it's coined as the central coast and uh, it's about three and a half hours North of LA. Yeah. Damn. Never heard. I mean, I'm from Cali. I'd, okay. Yeah. Well, man, if I ever uh, go up that probably right off, you say you're off the coast of the one that talk about a beautiful yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll look you up, man. It's been Have you ever heard of, yeah. You better, man. Have you ever heard of Pismo beach? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm right there, bro. That's where I'm at. Jeez. Yeah. Paradise. Okay. Or what? Oh, it's beautiful, bro. We only have like the hottest weather we get here, unless it's like a hot season is like 77, 80. Yeah. You know, that's when it's like people are complaining at 80 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Just beautiful, man. I've heard so much about Pismo Beach. I think I went there, uh, you know, when I was younger. Got to go back. Now I got a reason, man. Please come back, man. I mean, if you're yeah. ever this way, dude, you got to here. Definitely, man. Sounds good. You know, I will. Hey, man, it was, a, it was a pleasure talking to you again, bro. And uh, I'll hopefully see you on Instagram more and we'll, we'll do some more exchange, I'm sure, bro. Absolutely. Thanks again, man. I appreciate Thanks, you. Eddie. I'll see you, brother. <laughs>